we're back and we're doing the dang thing. This is the Chasing Common Ground podcast. My name is Chris. I have hosted a podcast essentially called The Lifestyle Chase since 2018. And in the last year or so, maybe two years, I rebranded it to be Chasing Common Ground because I just wanted it to kind of be clear what my lens of looking through life was. So the lifestyle chase, the naming of that was me in pursuit of a career and a sense of purpose that I felt fulfilled by. And so that's where it made sense. Where that name didn't work out for me was when people would, uh, let's say I booked a guest and they didn't know me personally. And because of the name of the show, they would assume my name was Chase. I've actually got at least one friend named Chase. He was on the podcast. And so I could see how that could be confusing. You know, when I think about it, I'm pretty sure I have at least three friends named Chase, just covering all the bases in case any of you are listening. Which brings me to the next point. If you're keeping track here, the last time I uploaded an episode was in April. And I was batch recording then, and I had big plans of bringing on some new formats, some new exciting things. And what I've learned over the years is a lot of things change. And they can change for reasons that benefit us. So, like, we can have life throw us a curveball that is in the best interest of everybody involved. And it doesn't mean that we are limited to what we can do in the future. Essentially, I had a feeling that I was going to be bringing on a co-host. And then we both kind of poured into our own careers more than ever before. And I think we both benefited from it. And so that's sort of like the message I'm sharing here is that sometimes things don't work out, but it's actually not a problem at all. Um, Because I know if that friend of mine is listening, that they got my back, I got their back, we're good to go. And chances are, me hosting this podcast solo could bring more insight to someone else than if I was with a co-host. Because... At this point in my career, I have so many unique situations I find myself in, so much unique experience that nobody else, I don't know anybody who has the same work experience, life experience that I do. And that's what excites me about getting back to the show. I want to make sure that I pay tribute to someone who I work with with their fitness and nutrition Um, someone who I would consider a friend, and someone who has been a very, very vocal supporter of this podcast. Her name is Joan, and she has listened to at least 100 consecutive episodes, which is a pretty big deal, because I cannot name a single other person who's done that. I think my dad's probably listened to 80% of the episodes, but he may have dropped off when... uh, The sports season heated up. We will see. He might be tuning into this one. So if he heard that, hello, Dad. Moving on, I wanted to kind of recap some of the things that have happened since. I did record some episodes, but they didn't end up being aired because I, whether it was me changing my mind on things or current events changing, there was one where I was talking about the Oilers. (laughs) <laughs> then the Oilers lost. So I didn't necessarily want to talk about the Oilers anymore after they lost. The content and subject matter would still be relevant, so I might share some of those snippets. But within these last few months, I actually spontaneously booked a trip to Denmark in May. Um, I may have told this story in other channels or if you've spoken to me in person, if I coach you. But I'm going to tell you the story from the start. How I went to Denmark for the second time in my life. I was on Facebook January 1st, 
making one of those lame jokes about how, wow, it's been a year since I've seen everybody. But I was just referring to the fact that like the date that we put on, on our piece of paper changes. So it wasn't 2023 anymore, it was 2024. So it had been a year since I'd seen everybody in 2023. But not everybody played along with the joke aspect, and some people played along with the I'm going to get him to visit aspect. So this would work out to be my mom's cousin-in-law, and he lives in Denmark, and he has visited Canada many times with his wife, and his mother-in-law the first time they visited so that meant that i got to meet a long lost great aunt from denmark which for me on a personal level was very meaningful because i grew up without grandparents so aunts and uncles great aunts great uncles those are extra special for me um but long story short he commented on the facebook and said come to denmark and I've been working really hard <laughs> over the entire course of my training career, but it's actually been paying off over the last few years where I don't have to worry about expenses as much as I would have before. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that I have diversified so intensely that you could close all the gyms and I'd still be okay. And you could you would have to do a lot of things to take me out of being in business and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all with fitness some of it is within like uh, videography some of it is just simply tech consulting some of it is one-off events but i've just become very resourceful because of the cards i've been dealt and because of that when he said come to denmark i was able to say when and he said me and so i booked it I booked flights to be in Denmark for the first couple of weeks of May. I stayed with two sets of, I'm just going to call them cousins, but I think structurally through the family tree, they'd be classified as second cousins. I've even been told it would be like second cousins once removed. But nonetheless, like it's uh, my mom's cousin's kids. So we're on the same level of the tree. And... I enjoy getting to see them and spend time with them. So it was a really, really good trip. And the things that stood out for me, like I'm at the age where I could legitimately uh, be the father of a 12-year-old, which is like I'm 32. So I could have had the kid in my 20s, early 20s. And sometimes I kind of yeah, it doesn't click in my brain because I'm like, ah, well, I'm just doing all the same stuff I did in high school, going to gym class and playing with computers. But uh, a lot of other people's lives change around me. The cool thing was I got to spend time with kids and realize I was like, well, I just, I like hanging out with kids. Like I like training kids. I like to um, just have a reason <laughs> to set an example uh, it doesn't really matter if I set an example for older siblings. Um, it doesn't really matter if I set an example for a lot of people, but then that actually taught me that it really does matter. And it matters for everybody in our lives. And where it started to stand out that it matters and why I feel drawn to record the podcast again is that there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Um, we can all think of someone with a big audience that have started a podcast or someone who was established as an author or was on a reality TV show or a host of a reality TV show. They got a podcast and there is just so much fluff out there. There's so much like this is the latest fad, this is the latest trend, and it kind of feels like we're losing that sense of connection and learning and mentorship and whatnot. And so I have been surrounded by mentors my whole life, as are like most people who listen to this, when we really think about it, we've all been surrounded by mentors. It's just how you see the world, whether it's an older colleague at work that has taught you something, 
your parents, aunts, uncles, your neighbor, somebody who taught you to change oil, somebody who taught you to make a pie. Like there's mentors everywhere you look. And I've just been able to kind of like soak up so much information, soak up so much different views on life that I don't, like I'm not hearing about this on the podcasts that are mainstream. And it's very difficult to find one that actually does talk about it, where you actually feel like, like I was describing this to Joan, my client that I work with, that I like when I listen to one of my podcasts and whether it be me and a guest or just me solo, it has that level of connection that feels like a one-on-one coaching session. Despite the fact that it's very one-sided and you don't get a chance to talk about what's going on for you, uh, which is a great segue to say, you know what, if you are listening to the podcast, it's more important than ever that you reach out to me, find me on Instagram at Christian Little, or send me an email, chris at invigoratetraining.com. Don't try to sell me anything. Don't try to pitch yourself for the show. <laughs> Just give me some feedback on what were your takeaways. Uh, if you use AI to fish through all the show notes and then add me to email lists, I won't respond. And I'm a bit more blunt about these kinds of things just simply because I'm older and wiser and I've learned a lot of stuff and I've gotten a lot of spam emails and been added to a lot of lists that I don't want to be on. So if you're going to find it in the transcript that I don't want to be on your list, I might as well put it in there. So that aside, it was just simply that because Joan, we have our check-ins regularly and she'll tell me she listened to episode 99 and what she learned or she listened to episode 82 and what were her takeaways or she'll be curious about someone. She'll be like, okay, they said they were going to get married. Did they get married? Or they said they were going to have a kid. Did they have a kid? And like, I can give them updates. I can be like, not only do they have one kid, they have three kids now because like four years have passed. And that type of interaction is super cool. And so if you want that level of interaction, yeah, like feel free. Follow me on Instagram. Tell me how you found me. Reach out. I check my message filters pretty regularly because sometimes if somebody that doesn't follow you sends you a message, it can get lost. But I'll respond. Just don't sell me anything. That's, that's the only rule. Um, if anybody's going to sell anything, it's me. I'm selling the things, but no, I'm joking. Um, so what I started to notice was just that, like, there's lots of room for a role model. Um, and it doesn't have to be me. It could be somebody that I've introduced you to over the years. It could be someone that I remind you of that's already in your life. Like, maybe you just think... Maybe I should have more meaningful conversations with my parents or maybe I should have more meaningful conversations with like my partner or neighbor or teammate. Um, If I inspired you to do that, then that's perfect. But where I start to see like how things have shifted over the years is that so much of our connection is empty and hollow. And people are losing touch with what is connection. Like connection is um, you stick by someone through the thick and the thin. There's a lot of people who struggle with uh, finding connection on online dating apps. There's people who struggle with uh, making long-term partnerships work with whether it be business or marriage, etc. I've seen lots of people uh, get divorced recently. Uh, it's soul crushing to just kind of have this idea in your head that you're just going to have a ride or die person. They're going to be with you no matter what. And then you start to realize, well, that doesn't, that's not always how the world works. But what I want to talk about, and I'll expand on this in future episodes, I have a list of topics that I'm going to address. But what I want to talk about is with the right fundamentals in place. Um, 
we can improve our quality of life, not only through how we exercise and the food that we eat and the habits that we have, but also through how we spend our time. Uh, it's going to become more and more evident I am of the camp of you don't have to work a job that you hate. And if you don't believe me, I proved it. <laughs> Which is pretty cool to say because I did. And it's not that people are like, oh yes, you can do anything that you want. There's lots of people, lots of people who have sent me links to apply for jobs um, or said that something I wanted to do wasn't realistic or maybe I should rethink my decisions or I was taking a step backwards but unless somebody unless there was some chance we'd get a second chance to like you live one life or you work a job that you hate your whole life until you're so old you can't even like function and then you get a second chance with all this money that you saved working the job that you hated to work a job that you didn't hate but the thing is that we don't necessarily get a second chance uh, it just kind of depends on your uh, philosophies and views on life. Like some people may feel that they'd get reincarnated. I'm not opposed to the idea. I'd love to come back as a dog. But let's say in the scenario that there is nothing beyond this and it's just darkness and it just ends. I would tend to say I'm a bit more of a spiritual person. So I think the energy is still out there in some way, shape or form whether through reincarnation or maybe a guardian angel or whatever. But let's say in the scenario where everything just ends and it stops and you look back and you spent like 60 years doing something that didn't make you feel good about yourself, didn't make you feel like you were contributing to a greater good, you didn't enjoy it, you hated every day. Like, why? And especially now with technology, like... With the advancements of technology and how fast the world changes and how fast like service industry changes and the products that we buy, the things we subscribe to, the activities that we do, the things we need to do and the things we don't need to do. Like we used to need to do so many tasks around our house and get groceries, like leave the house and go to the grocery store. Now we don't need to. Now we can take something out of our fridge and there's like automation that can say that we used up all the cheese and it can send a notification to Amazon to order you more cheese and the cheese comes to your door and you don't need to leave your house. And that's going to become more and more evident as more people in the most developed countries start to kind of keep up with the Joneses, as it were. Similar to there would have been a period of time where some people had color TVs and some people didn't. Well, now it's unusual for somebody to have any screen that doesn't provide you with color. Like, we've all got our phones, we've got projectors, we've got uh, all kinds of gadgets and gizmos. People can take pictures with their watch. Uh, the possibilities are endless and like the technology just keeps advancing. There are things that exist that I wish didn't exist because they are so potentially dangerous. Like being able to make a deep fake of somebody. Uh, being able to make a person's voice say things that they didn't say. So with that in mind... Um, if ever you find something on the internet that doesn't quite sound like me, question it. Because <laughs> the technology is at a place where you should. And if I ever, if we have a good rapport and I'm just throwing out personal insults and naming names and saying things that would put me in jail, uh, just call me. <laughs> and it's probably not me and we'll go get that sorted out and probably have to get a verified Instagram account. Nonetheless... All that aside, I think there is a lot of value in instilling in people some of the things that I've learned personally, even though my way is not the only way to do life. Um, there's lots of things that I'm probably doing wrong. I definitely have made mistakes in life, and I've definitely had bad judgment calls on things. But at the same time, 
as I reflected on my past episodes, like I think I was listening to episode 90 or 91 or something like that, and it was a solo episode much like this, and to hear a younger version of myself with some of the things that I was sharing, I was, wow, like, I feel like I was on to something before I even realized what I was on. Like, I was thinking about things that were important that I thought that I just realized were important now. But in fact, I still knew they were important back then. And I was building a life that that reinforced that. Where I've always, for, for many years, I've thought it was more important to establish connections with family and friends than to be in a rush to get a Lamborghini. I've thought it's more important to stop and like enjoy connection, enjoy experiences, um, find ways to change your scenery, change your surroundings, see things from other people's perspective. Uh, and now it's just I've had the opportunity to live it out more than ever. I've had the opportunity to travel at a frequency that I thought might not be possible again because you change careers, finances change, and you start to wonder if you're ever going to have like the options and choices that you would have had with the stable career. But now like it's almost like I have more options and choices, definitely more opportunities, definitely more flexibility, which reiterates just the fact that it's uh, that's why it's important to not only kind of bet on yourself when it comes to the things that you want to go out and do, it's also important to uh, be open to the lessons that other people are willing to share with you. Because in a lot of scenarios, like when I really reflect on things, um, I've probably accumulated this career, this lifestyle, all of the life lessons that I have because I have surrounded myself with other people who are doing the thing. And if I don't know how to do something, I'll often find somebody who does and just be open to being a beginner and open to making mistakes. Like I know when I went to for my first jujitsu class, I knew I wasn't going to just be the most awesome jujitsu person ever because to be quite frank, every time I've tried anything, I it's been rough starting it and lots of learning moments. It can be embarrassing at times, but the secret sauce for me is I just don't quit. And if I don't quit, then by just sheer nature, I progress. Uh, and by having a positive attitude and trying to not make anything more like less like the energy you bring to a room can make such a ripple effect and so if i'm going to bring an energy to a room i do my very best to bring a positive energy to the room because if i'm going to bring an energy and it's a negative energy i might as well stay home but not everybody shares that sentiment and sometimes it's just simply through the amount that they know about themselves like i know about myself that I'm not always positive, and so I have to find ways to be positive when I want to bring a positive energy. And I know when I don't feel positive, I gotta do something about it. So in the past, like just as recent as a month ago, I've had to just like take myself on a walk and just like be with my thoughts, reflect on things, um, just process things, and sort of like, figure out what's going on and what I can do about it. Sometimes what you can do about it is you go to the gym and you just get some things off your chest. Some things, sometimes what you can do about it to be positive is you can uh, get in an environment where it's not just you, where you are around other people. So for me, the easiest way to do it as a 32 year old is to go to jujitsu um, because as you get older, it is harder to make adult friendships so you have to find a place where the friendships are built in. When you're doing jiu-jitsu, uh, somebody is going to get along with you eventually because you're in pretty close quarters and you have the option to make sure a person can train the next day or completely 
disable them to the point where they will quit jujitsu. And in most cases, as a good teammate, you make sure that they're capable of training the next day and you don't cause them to have an injury that could just completely end their time with jujitsu. And that's something, fortunately, if somebody's new to a jujitsu, the experienced practitioners will be able to defend themselves and keep that person from hurting not only themselves but others as well and it would only be a scenario where somebody maybe uh miscalculated their strength or there's like a freak accident where somebody would get injured in the sport because it's a very gentle sport uh but this episode wasn't particularly going to be specifically on jujitsu and it wasn't going to be specifically on any one topic because I'll follow up this episode with more specific topics to come. I'm going to finish this off with just a few key points from the recordings that I had done prior because I think I had some really good takeaways. One of the episodes I recorded shortly after returning from Denmark. First things first, I wanted to share with you some of the books that I've been diving into. These are books that I listened to while I was flying on some recent travel. If you follow me on social media, you'll be in the loop on things. If you do not, then I'm just going to kind of tease it out earlier in this. So first things first, we're going to look into my library and I'm going to share some of the books that I listened to. So one of them being Lean Marketing. So that's like an eight hour, 20 minute audiobook that kind of goes over the essentials of kind of positioning your business and what you actually need to do, what you should focus on, kind of gets you in the right frame of mind to work more efficiently towards your goals. Another one that I listened to was Grit by Angela Duckworth. And I like how she kind of unpacked what exactly is grit and what makes up people who show grit in their life and how grit can be discovered or what you would notice that would be like a trait of having grit. Uh, Let's see what else. And I've got, basically I've had Audible as a subscription for the past four years. This isn't even an ad. You know, it should be, but it's not an ad for Audible. I've really enjoyed it and I've had a different book to listen to for every month for many, many years. I've never like hesitated to make sure that I got my value from that subscription. I have listened to books that people who disagree with me on things have suggested. I have listened to books that people I admire has suggested. I have had other people suggest books that have helped them to get to where they were. And I basically, without asking any questions, just listened to each one of them and decided what I liked and what I didn't like. So I think it's a good practice to take on. One of the other books that I listened to just like this past week, and I do this just about every spring, is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And a book that I was just starting over the weekend is No Bad Parts by Richard C. Schwartz. I've still got, like, I'm just barely starting that one. It's very intriguing, very deep. Uh, And I would say definitely check that one out too. And another book that I've been digging into is called Yes by Noah J. Goldstein, Steve J. Martin, and Rob... B. C. L. D. N. E. So, a lot of these books that I go into are like personal development, self improvement, business, marketing. That's kind of like my area of interest. And then for any of the fictional type stuff, I tend to. I mean, there's fiction books that I enjoy, but I think I enjoy the movies more. So where some people might read the Dune books, I just watch the Dune movies. Some people, I I definitely read the Harry Potter books and watch the Harry Potter movies. I read the Lord of the Ring books and watch the Lord of the Ring movies. Some people might want to read like the the fan spinoff series of Harry Potter books. I don't quite go that far in. But 
professionally, I take great interest in just understanding how things work and sort of like seeing the bigger picture, not only with my fitness, but with uh, the position that I can find myself in life and how the world works and what I can expect in the future and what I should work on for myself if I want to progress personally. Um, also, I've mentioned these podcasts in the past, but I'm going to mention them again. A couple podcasts that I listen to, one of them being The Canadian Investor. The other one is The Canadian Real Estate Investor. And then the third one is called The Side Hustle Show with Nick Loper. Those are three podcasts that I personally listen to regularly that I find add value to my life. But the, the caveat is that I have specific special interests that not everybody else is going to share. So I like to learn what's happening in the stock market. And I like to learn what's happening in like just real estate in general because I have invested interests of what I want to do with my future. So I like to see what the forecast is for things. And I'm a homeowner, so I like to see what's the valuation going to look like and how does certain development positively impact or negatively impact and what are the things in my control. Long story short, he commented on the Facebook and said, come to Denmark. The structure of my trip was I was basically staying with family where they had work, they had school. So during the day, I'd kind of be able to do adventures or work on some remote work in the house and just enjoy the scenery, enjoy life in a different part of the world. And in the evenings, we'd be able to catch up, have our visits, go for walks. And there was a few days where we'd be able to dedicate like a whole Saturday, a whole Sunday, a whole Friday, etc. towards going on sightseeing. And I got to actually witness my first ever, it was a Danish championship for orienteering. And orienteering, I think, is a great sport for all people. It's something that I don't see very much of in Canada, but there's a huge opportunity for it to be here. But the main message that I want to highlight here is the spontaneity of this trip and the outcome of it. So if I didn't, if I didn't book this trip on a whim like I did, if I didn't just almost make a point to show how much control I had in my lifestyle by just being like, you say go to Denmark? Of course I'll go to Denmark. And then I book it. If I hadn't done that, I don't know that I would have done it because I would have made all these excuses. And I find that it's very common among people, whether professionally or personally, where they hold back from having the best experience that they could in their life because it's just easier for them to come up with reasons why they shouldn't. And that's unfortunate because there's just so much that we can get out of life while we're alive. I think that sometimes the standards that we're seeing within all the visuals of life kind of like blow things out of proportion. So what I'm saying here is if you're growing up in this age where all you've ever known is you look at a screen and you see like how things work and how people became millionaires or how people could became fit or what they're eating or what they shouldn't be eating. And your whole world is influenced by sort of like a curated, very systematized algorithm of information. You could be leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. Whereas if your world was more shaped by you learn from making connections with people, you learn from these meaningful conversations, you learn from like the grandparents you talk to, you learn from the uncles and aunts you talk to, you learn from going on long walks with parents or siblings, and you're just learning from every touch point that you have in real life, your experience will be profoundly different. Because if you make all your decisions based on things that you saw and learned on the internet, some of that is real and some of that is not real because there's so much production that we can do with media on the internet. And I think what's going to set things apart in the future is being able to discern between genuine connection and sort of just content creation. What I try to put out with my media is genuine connection. I try to make it concise so that I have a message that I'm sharing but I also try to make it as true to real life as possible so that if you listen to my podcast or you watch my videos, 
it's the same me that you would see in real life. All that to say that as we are building our lives based on the influence on the technology and as technology is changing to incorporate more artificial intelligence, I think there needs to be some semblance of spontaneity that is put into our lives. Because I've heard people say this and I tend to agree. Money isn't necessarily the thing that should be shaping all of our decisions and our identity and everything like that. I think it's best if we build ourselves around like a sense of identity, like just a sense of purpose. What is it? Why are we here? And not just on a very basic level, but maybe on a more zoom it out level. So like, why am I here? I kind of like the idea of having some kind of a legacy, even if it's just that I did enough substantially impactful things that it was worthwhile to share it on the show. And one day somebody did a binge listen and listened to the show from the earlier episodes to the episodes now. Maybe someone who I work with with their fitness and nutrition, um, someone who I would consider a friend, and someone who has been a very, very vocal supporter of this podcast. Her name is Joan. And she has listened to at least 100 consecutive episodes, which is pretty big deal. We somebody stumbled across the YouTube and they heard like a book recommendation and that made an impact. So legacy can be in that way of looking at it. It could also be in like family. Like, will somebody one day be my descendant or will the influence that I have be mostly through the many... Uh, kids that may look at me as a mentor or a role model or an uncle. Um, I've recently been honored. You know how you'll have a, a friend that has a kid and there's no like blood relation, but you still get that title of uncle. I've been finding myself being called an uncle more and more. And that's not a title that I take lightly. I think that's pretty cool because that's kind of like, that is a, significant, significant thing. And it's, that means you have to think about how you're conducting yourself in the world because you're going to be, ideally, someone is thinking about you as their backup. That's how I see it. That's my personal belief. Feel free to disagree and think that uncles should be just totally unhinged and just the worst role models in the world. But the way I see it is I want to be solid backup for people who rely on me, where it's if I'm in a bind, I know that Uncle Chris has my back. Or, or like for my friends, if they are, they just need somebody to talk to, they know that I'll find a way, even if it's just over message, that I'll make some time for them. Sometimes I only have so much time in the day, so it might seem that I'm like restricting myself, but I just, I got a lot going on. But I'm not going to just leave somebody on red and not respond or not acknowledge. Maybe they're having a bad day and I'm like, do you need to tell me what's happening? Do you need advice? Do you need to vent? How can I help? Because I think that's important. And I think as time goes on, it'll become like a skill that's that much more valuable. A lot of people will say that it's a very privileged thing to say, that that is not everybody has the ability to do that. But I think that I come from a place of experience when I say that like I have been in very different places in my career where I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay my bills? And then I was like, oh my gosh, I actually did it. I paid all my bills. Like I have experienced very different levels of income and I have experienced lots of fear and lots of questioning the viability of things, questioning my future, wondering if my career made sense, wondering if I needed to get a different job, wondering if I'd ever have to like move back home because there was no other choice. I have questioned a lot of things and I have had to be very independent. And so with that, I can say that I think that you can find a way to change your environment, very similar to how I will in my life. I won't always live in the same place. I'll live in a different place because I'll be looking at the things that I've learned from my travel and from my professional experience. I'm going to want to integrate things that make my life a little bit easier 
while also aligning with my goals. Me making life easier isn't actually like getting a golf cart to move around like a big mansion area. It would actually be finding a way to make it more difficult to do the daily things to ensure that I got a baseline level of activity, whether I was feeling lazy or whether I was feeling ambitious. So that I had to have like a certain amount of walking that took place just for my life in general. And obviously with some workarounds that if I broke a leg or something that I could like make do that I wouldn't be trapped and unable to get to the essentials if there was anything that ever happened and that I would still be someone who could be visited by other people who couldn't walk. But you almost have to make your life a little bit more challenging, similar to how you'll see people walk around in a weighted vest, similar to how you'll see someone who is retired still having to have some semblance of a routine that challenges them mentally and physically. It still has to be tough. We still need some kind of like a stress, like a real stress, because otherwise we make up stress that comes from the virtual space. The ultimate option to progress in your professional life is to create something for yourself. That's something that some people have the capacity to do and some people do not. Some people have the grit to push through no matter what it takes and some people it would be so upsetting that it's more worthwhile for them to do what they know well and do it really well and get the most that they can from that experience. Because people can live a very good life uh, ascending through a system that's already in place where there's always that next step, there's that next level, and they have sort of like a progression model to make sure that the company continues to evolve with technology where the software update comes into play, that company uses that software, they get integrated into the new changes of the software, everybody grows, the standard rises. And that's that's where a company might have like a ISO standard. I have no idea what ISO stands for, but I, I think they have a standard of ISO 9000, ISO 3000 or something, where they basically can see where there's a structure in place to progress your team and where there's some continuity across the board where it's not like okay well this person's bald and this person's not bald so we're going to promote the bald person like there's a rhyme or reason to everything but with that said just looking at the opportunities to do what you actually want to in life based on like do you want to travel or not do you like your work or not are you enjoying what you do for work or not? Are you active or not? Is it easy for you to be active realistically? Or is there a consistent obstacle, whether it be geographically, emotionally, uh, maybe like some people benefit profoundly by simply just moving away from a winter climate. Uh, some people just... It, would not be wise for them to live in a very cold climate because they are so reliant on sunny days. And with that said, sometimes you go to a sunny climate and it's all good and fine. And then there is more climate issues like heat waves or tornadoes or floods. So it's, it's like that analogy where it's like you're better off to appreciate what you have as you have it than to constantly look for the greener grass on the other side. But I think there's a lot of opportunity to kind of like assess the situation, maybe pivot as needed, where maybe if somebody was, I see a lot of examples within my social circle of kids who end up not doing public school, but they'll actually opt to do private school. Um, I actually have a good friend and client who went through private school. And the reason I'm using his, him as an example was his parents weren't the typical archetype of somebody who would send their kids to private school. They basically did whatever they could to have the means to make it happen, knowing the benefits that would be reaped by their children in the end. So they would have had to work extra hard, make extra sacrifices. They would be going above and beyond what a typical person would say would be like what is necessary to work enough. They basically burn the candle at both ends to empower a brighter future for their child. 
and that's not every that's not something for everybody but it's just to kind of point out this wasn't an example of somebody handing 10 million dollars to their kid and setting them up for the best life ever there's zach hyman i just about forgot his name and zach hyman who has actually risen to more widespread fame through Shaq's impression of him. So now it's Shaq Hyman when, when Shaq does the impression where he's kind of showing how Zach will get up to the goal and he'll kind of do like a sloppy rebound or he'll just like screen the goalie. He'll just make goals happen in a similar fashion to the way that Ryan Smith used to do it. Zach Hyman some people like him, some people don't like him. Personally, I have no reason not to like him. Other people might choose not to like him because they are aware that like, for him to rise up in the ranks through the hockey system, his parents basically like bought entire hockey leagues. They owned multiple teams. They, they had a lot of control over the direction of things. They had a lot of control over the opportunities he would have and there was never any worry of can we afford like the league fees there's no restrictions they could just pour money into Zach but I see it as no matter what financial opportunities you have there is still a certain amount of merit that goes into professional sport because even people who get the get the red carpet all the way to their journey to the NHL and everything's laid out for them. There's a lot of like mental pressure to being a professional athlete where you can see an athlete have all the talent in the world. You can see them have all the opportunity. You can see them get drafted super high, super early, I should say. And somehow their career doesn't work out. Maybe they can't handle the pressure. Maybe... It was an example of big fish, small pond, and now it's small fish, big pond. Maybe it was social dynamics. They've never had to be tested socially because nobody was willing to challenge them in the earlier leagues. And then they get to a bigger league with different teammates and different backgrounds and different experiences and Sony butts heads with them and they cannot do it. So they can't get their game face on. There's so many different examples so I feel like up to a point, you kind of have to give people credit where credit's due, that if they're in a professional league, they're able to handle the press. They're able to handle the pressures of like, if you don't perform well as a professional athlete, your career is going to end. And then what are you going to do for income? And the fact that despite the fact that Zach Hyman doesn't need to have all these other jobs and income streams, like, theoretically, if he got all these opportunities as a kid because things were paid for and he didn't have to worry about money, wouldn't you think that he would have no need to be a published author, that he would have no need to be, I think he's the CEO of, like, a gaming group or something like that? Like, he's got a lot of projects on the go. And if he was fully taken care of, why would he have these projects on the go? So there is some level of initiative for him. There is some spark of ambition and I believe there was a story that came out where it was Zach Hyman and Ryan Nugent Hopkins that pushed somebody out of the ditch or out of the snow. Like, you can't, you can't beat that. And just his way of carrying himself in public interactions, in press interviews and stuff, he's very kind and respectful, and there have been examples of the opposite. And I am not hearing any stories in the background of Zach Hyman making a disgrace of the Oilers organization, where there are plenty of stories of past Oilers who have. And that's just kind of something that I wanted to point out, just with the fact that, like, we can get misconstrued of our idea of something, we can get confused of the potential that we may have to make a change in our life, we can get in our head about how somebody else made the change in their life and why we can't. I could say I wasn't an NHL player because I didn't have rich parents like Zach Hyman. Or I could be like, I wasn't an NHL player because Zach Hyman outworked me. And so did hundreds of other young hockey playing kids. But I can also apply that same work ethic that they may possess in a direction that might appeal to me more. And for me, it's more so on the level of 
understanding what it takes to essentially, for me, it's to get to the bar and gym. I want to have a bar and gym. I want to be able to connect with people. I want to be able to host people. So I can't just have some like hole in the ground with a squat rack. Like it's, it's quite a project that I have in my mind that I'm working towards. And I like being close to family. Um, if I was to move far away from like my parents and siblings, I would have a backup plan in place where I would know a private pilot that could shuttle people back and forth. Like it would be something like that. Or it would be to the degree that if I move far away, people could visit me and they'd, I'd be able to be very hospitable to anybody who visited. So it would incentivize people to get on a plane. But all of this has a lot of like moving parts, but I think it's important to, to have that in mind so that we can understand like what kind of a life are we creating for ourselves another episode I recorded by the campfire. Uh, this will also kind of reinforce one of my personal goals, and that is to grow my YouTube channel. So if you want to watch the video version and you're not already subscribed to Substack where you're able to watch it on video, definitely head over to YouTube. You can find it by searching my name, Chris Little, on YouTube, and you'll find a page with some of my training videos with a lot of past podcast episodes in the video format and as well as some of the projects that I've worked on in the past, such as Euler videos, and uh, I'm going to be sharing some more of the things that I've been working on behind the scenes that you might not know about me, or things that I'm passionate about that are deeply meaningful. People can feel very discouraged in what the future may hold, or they can feel very disconnected because we are in this space where we all have a phone and we can reach people through our phone. And for some of us, we can reach thousands of people through our phone, but you miss out on that sense of connection, which is another of the key points that I benefited from, from my travels, because for me, it means a lot to me to nurture connections in my life. And something that comes up often is we as humans don't have the capacity to nurture every single connection in our life but we can certainly choose a few to kind of pour into that cup. For me, I am just lucky in that the relatives that I had a chance to spend time with have a lot in common with me. They're very fitness minded. They're very uh, innovative. They like to learn new things and that made it that much more enjoyable. I also find that uh, any chance that I get to be supportive to anyone is great. So I got a chance to do some strength training with one of my relatives and I got a chance to um, just enjoy life, go for walks, go to Tivoli, go on more walks. There's a lot of walking, I'll admit. Uh, my cousin Liv asked what I like to do for fun and I just said I like to go on long ass walks. And that is the absolute truth and it's funny to have it sink in. But in the interest of ensuring that this episode hits the airwaves today, on what day is it? I believe today is August 9th. I'm going to double check. Today is August 9th. And we're going to release this thing today. And the show is going to be back. And I'll be recording some other episodes on more specific directed topics. Because we need more genuine connection in the podcast space. We need less fluff. Uh, we need somebody a little bit less famous saying things as they are and sharing experiences as they happen and being able to kind of set an example for not only youth but adults in exercising, taking care of yourself, not hating your job and not trying to be a millionaire in a week when it's a journey that is possible but takes a lot more resilience, grit and education and mentorship. So I hope that you enjoyed this solo episode. If you did listen, please share it on social media. You can tag me at Christian Little. Last name is L-I-D-D-L-E. You can also find me on YouTube. Or if you have feedback and you're not selling me anything, remember we talked about that. If you have a comment or maybe something that you've enjoyed from a past episode, feel free to send me a message 
chris at invigoratetraining.com or on social media. Would love to hear from you. Thanks for supporting me and we will catch you on the next one.